Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Lashi. Yes, Lashi. Okay. And we see three of you. Have you started your uh, soil soil chemistry lab yet? No, oh, but we're just going to do soil chemistry. So you haven't start the soil chemistry, a uh, so, soil science lab, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll first quickly go over what we learned from last week. Um, since last week we only have one lec, we only had one lecture, and it's been a week, right? Okay, so last week we finished our um, intro chapter, which is uh, stereochemistry, right? We talk about in addition to RS notation to stereo, uh, to a chiral molecule, another set of uh, notation are also in used, are also in, are also used, uh, which is the DL notation, right? And the DL notation is uh, named, refer to the absolute configuration of the uh, gly uh, glycoaldehyde, uh, right? Okay, and we talk about uh, DL notation is actually quite important for us because uh, for our next uh, series of phytochemicals like carb the carbohydrates or saccharide we talk about, they are actually, their configuration are actually noted in DL notation, right? All the naturally occurring saccharide are all or, or in uh, D configuration and uh, in the near future, we'll, we will also learn about uh, amino acids, polypeptide, and the proteins. And in that chapter, we will we'll also know that all the naturally occurring amino acids are all in L configuration, okay? And then we start our first chapter on saccharides. Uh, we talk about the biosynthesis of sac uh, carbohydrates or saccharide, right? They are um, synthesized by green plants by a process called a photosynthesis. And actually, there are two set of uh, reactions involved in this, uh, in the photosynthesis, right? One is the li light. Uh, reaction and the other is duct reaction, which is also called the Calvin cycle, but all occurred in chlorophyll, right? And only green plants, green algae, uh, certain um, bacteria and protists, they contain, they, they have chlorophyll. Animals, they don't, okay? And we also talk about the classification of carbohydrates that we talk about. Uh, talk, uh, they can be classified, they can be categorized into uh, several categories according to the number of uh, sugar units and according to their reducing property, according to their um, sugar units, they can be classified into monosaccharide, which is the most simple uh, saccharide, the monomer, only one monomer units, and disaccharide, which is composed of uh, two monosaccharide units, and oligosaccharide, which contains three to ten units. And the last Last type is uh, polysaccharide, right? Polysaccharide, they are usually 
uh, polymers, okay? And according to their reducing property, it can be categorized into aldols, which is the saccharide with aldehyde group or ketones, that is, which is the saccharide with a ketone group, okay? And we will learn in today's lecture that they are different in their reducing abilities, okay? They react differently. And we start, uh, we start out from the most simple one, which is the monosaccharide, okay? And for monosaccharide, according to the number of cotton that are involved in the molecule, they are also, there are also different types, okay? All right. And we talk about their um, configuration in DL notation. This is DL uh, notation again, okay? Um, so this is uh, referred to the glyceride aldehyde, okay? The absolute configuration of glyceraldehyde if for, for for saccharide will place the most oxidized group at the top uh, so like I said the saccharide are, all, are either polyhydroxyl aldehyde or polyhydroxyl ketone so which is the most oxidized group. Hydroxyl group, methanol group, or the aldehyde or ketone in this case. Anyone? Any volunteers? For saccharide, which is the most ox oxidized group? Is it the ketone? Yeah, for ketones, it's ketone, right? Ketone yeah. is more oxidized uh, than hydroxyl or methanol, right? This is for ketones. Uh, as how about for aldols? It's the uh, aldehyde, right? Aldehyde is more oxidized than the hydroxyl or methanol group, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah sure. We will, yeah, we'll place the for ketones. We'll place ketone group at the top. For aldols, we place aldehyde group at the top, and then we will look at the chiral carbon that is farthest from the carbonyl group, okay? Both ketone and uh, aldehyde, they have carbonyl groups, right? We'll only look at the carbons, the uh, chiral center farthest from the carbonyl group if the hydroxyl is on the left, then it's uh, L notation. If, it, if it's on the right, then it's a D uh, isomer, right? Okay. So remember, we had a question for you to think about last uh, from last one. Is that how many chiral carbons are in, for example, glucose? This is glucose, right? Okay, this is glucose. So how many chiral centers are there? Have you? And any ideas? Can you hear me? Yes, you. I can't hear you. Your question. Uh, so this is glucose, right? Mm -hmm. And glucose, it's a hex, uh, hexose, so it has uh, six carbons, right? Mm -hmm. And how many chiral carbons are there? 
among the six carbons, how many are chiral center? That's my question. Right. So this is glucose, right? And it has it contain it has six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Mm -hmm. This is the most oxidized with the carbonyl group. And for the rest are uh, either uh, so how, how many chiral centers are chiral carbons are there in this in these six? Carbons, how many carbons and means how many carbon are connect to diff four different groups or atoms, right? Now let's look at. Okay, let me ask you. Okay, let, let's let's talk about this first. Okay, so for the first one, the carbonyl carbon, right? This is the carbonyl group. Right, or, or aldehyde. It's not a chiral center, right? No. No, and this, how about the last one? This one, since it's linked to two hydrogens, so it's not a chiral center either, right? The two hydrogens are same, right? So we only look at these four, right? The second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. For the second one, okay? For the second um, carbon, so it's linked to hydrogen and uh, hydroxyl and aldehyde and the rest is, all, all these are, are all these are the rest groups, right? And this the, 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 these four are completely different four groups, right? So the second carb, carbon is a chiral center, okay? How about the third one? For the third one, it's again link uh, connect to hydroxyl on the left, uh, hydrogen on the right, and this group on on top and this one on the bottom. Yeah, on the bottom. So these are all different again, right? The, the four groups are different, right? So this is also a chiral center here on the third one. How about the fourth one? Okay, it's con connect to um, hydrogen on the left and hydroxy on the right. And the, the, uh the uh, the group on top and the group on the bottom again are different right so the fourth yeah. one is also a stereogenic center or chiral center right yeah so it has three okay. how about the fifth one how about the fifth carbon oh well, yes the fifth carbon the is it's also connected with uh, four different groups, right? So the fifth, so, so the fifth one again is a stereogenic center, right? So among all the six carbon, four oh. four of them are chiral centers, right? Which is the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one, right? Okay, so it has uh, so glucose has four chiral centers, which means how many enantiomers are there? Two. Remember we... Remember we, from our, uh, the lecture from last week? It should be, it has four chiral centers, so the maximum number of enantiomer are n's power of two, right? So the, for this case is fourth, fourth power of two. Okay, fourth power of two. Now let me ask you another question. So this is for DL notation. If it's in RS, K, 
uh, notation uh, are the R or S configuration for the L glyceride or D glyceride? A uh, glyceride aldehyde. Do you remember? Okay, so if it's in RS notation, let's look at uh first one, uh the L glycerol aldehyde on the left. Okay. So what is the priority rank of the th or of the four groups? Which one is the biggest? The hydroxyl is the biggest, right? Since yeah. starts with oxygen, right? Uh, hydroxyl ranks first. And then this carbonyl, this, this aldehyde group, that means uh, the, two, the carbon ox oxygen double bond equals to two carbon oxygen bond, single bond, right? So, aldehyde group ranks the second and then methanol group right so then the last one is uh, uh, hydrogen right so the priority rank should be hydroxyl um, aldehyde methanol and hydrogen so it's in uh, clockwise yeah in what, what what direction from here to here right in a clockwise direction however the hydrox uh, for the, uh, the the hydrogen atom is uh, on vertical or horizontal it's horizontal right so that means we are looking from the opposite direction so it's a uh, s configuration right remember this is for l glycerol aldehyde how about the d glycerol aldehyde the priority rank is the same from hydroxyl to aldehyde to methanol so it's uh, counterclockwise so it's an R configuration, right? Okay. This is a little bit of review from uh, our uh, stereochemistry also. Okay, now let's go on with our glucose. Okay, so there are actually four chiral center in glucose, okay? But we only look at the one, we only look at which one in, when determining their not, uh, configuration, whether it's a D or L, we only look at the fifth carbon since it is the farthest from the carbonyl, okay? So this is a carbonyl at the top here, okay? This is the most oxidized group here, is a carbonyl group or ketone for ketones, okay? For this case, for, for this case, it's glucose, it's aldose. So there are actually four chiral center, but we only look at the one that is farthest from the ca carbonyl group, which is the fifth carbon here, right? We only look at the fifth carbon, the configuration of the fifth carbon. And the configuration of the fifth carbon is uh, identical to D glyceride, glycerol aldehyde. So it is a D glucose, okay? So it's a D notation, okay? All right. So let's uh, summarize a little bit here. So if, uh, if we uh, depict the saccharide 
in Fisher projection, and we place the most oxidized uh, group at the top. And we only look at the carbon, the chiral carbon that is farthest from the carbonyl group and determine whether it's a D or L. It, uh, if the, Hydroxyl group is on the left, then it's uh, L isomer. If the hydro the hydroxyl is on the right, then it's uh, D isomer. Okay, the same configuration as the glycerol aldehyde. Okay, so when we determine whether it's a D or L, it, we refer to the glycerol aldehyde. Okay. All right, so from this, we can tell that glucose is a D sugar, okay? Does that make sense? We only look at the one, the, the fifth carbon, uh, Kairos carbon that is farthest from the carbonyl group, okay? Is that clear? Yes, actually, it's clear. Okay. In addition to glucose, uh, actually virtually or naturally occurring monosaccharide are all D sugars. Uh, for example, this is a D glucose as we talked about in last slide, and this is the mannose. It's also a uh, in a D configuration, right? It, the farthest chiral center to the carbonyl group also is the same as D glycerol aldehyde. So it's a D in a D configuration. So this it's actually D mannose. And this is fructose. Again, the same configuration, right? And like we talked about earlier, um, Saccharide, they are either uh, a polyhydroxyl aldehyde or polyhydroxyl ketone. So in this case, um, glucose and mannose, they are actually uh, polyhydroxyl aldehyde, right? They are with aldehyde groups. So they are aldose, right? And for fructose, it's a polyhydroxyl ketone, so it's a ketose with the ketone group, okay? And aldehyde and ketone, they are different in their reducing abilities, okay? So that this means uh, glucose and the fructose, they are, they are different in reducing abilities, okay? All right, let me, uh, another question for you. Is glucose and mannose the same or different molecule? Is glucose and mannose the same or different molecules? Different molecules. They are different, right, Bill? Okay. Although they have uh, exactly the same molecular formula, right? The, mo the atoms that constitute the, this molecule is all the same, right? However, like we talk about in our stereochemistry, the absolute configuration of these two chiral are different. So they are actually different molecules, right? That's why they have different names. This is glucose and this is mannose, okay? But if we look closely, we find that the only different in the configuration about one stereogenic, stereogenic center, which is the second carbon here, right? All the other three, uh, chiral center are the same 
the configuration of the rest, uh, the th rest of three chiral center are the same, right? If you look at the uh, the third carbon, the fourth, the fifth, the configuration are the same for glucose and mannose. Only differ in the configuration at the second carbon, uh, at the, uh, right? So in this case, the, these two di di stereoisomers which only differ in configuration about one stereogenic center are called epimers. So in this case, uh, d glucose and d manos they are epimers. Okay, they only differ in they only differ in configuration about one chiral center here. Okay, so they are epimers. How about glucose and galactose? Okay, let's examine the, these two. Again, uh, glucose, there are four chiral centers, right? This is what we all know. And for galactose, it's the same. The second, the third, fourth, and the fifth carbon are chiral center here in this case, okay? And the the configuration of these four chiral centers, uh, they only differ in the configuration about one stereogenic center, which is the fourth carbon here, right? The rest, the second, the third, and the fifth configuration are the same, right? So again, they are also epimers, okay? So d glucose and uh, d galactose they are also epimers. Okay, so this is the concept of uh, epimers. Now let's look at the simplest uh, monosaccharide. For this case, we take uh, glucose as a representative here, okay? So glucose is the most simple monosaccharide. Um, it's the most abundant monosaccharide also. It can pre uh, present in free states in fruits, plants, honey, blood, and the urine of animals. Um, this is a chemical formula, okay? Uh, of glucose and it's an aldose and uh, it's a hexose okay it has six carbons so it's a hexose so what do we call it's a aldohexose and there are four stereogenic center so there are actually the fourth power of two which equals 16 in total of optical isomers are possible, okay? So, um, in the up, uh, up the chiral centers are all denoted as a star here to tell it's a chiral center, okay? And the configuration of the fifth carbon is identical to D glycerol aldehyde, so it's a D sugar, okay? All right, now let's look at the chemistry of uh, glucose, okay? We take a look, glucose as a glucose as an example to look at the chemistry of monosaccharide. So glucose is a is an aldose. So that means in nature it is a aldehyde. Therefore, they react like aldehyde. Okay, aldehyde has rebu reducing ability, and f 
it can react with filling solution and tolerance re reagent. Um, for filling solution, it is an oxidizing reagent in this case, okay? So uh, what is filling solution? It is actually a basic copper hydroxide. So this is a filling solution, right? A filling solution. It is the basic uh, copper hydroxide. And when glucose reacts with filling, And when glucose react with filling solution, they reduce filling solution to copperous oxide. Okay, so this is copperous oxide. And filling solution oxidize aldehyde to carboxylic acid. So how do we tell which is a reducing agent and which is oxidizing agent? Which one is reduced and which is uh, oxidized? Do you remember from your last semester general, uh, in general chemistry? <laughs> Should be one should be the the residue should be the product after the reacting. Uh, it's relating to the reacting in the product. Bill, help me. Oh. We learned a uh, re redox reaction in your general chemistry. I think so, right? Yeah. yeah, how do we tell which one is a reducing agent and which one is oxidizing? Which one is reduced and which one is oxidized? So uh, for the, yeah, yeah, please. Okay, I think the, the, the first part of the, the equation or whatever, the, that's the, the reducing and then the second part is the oxidizing. Mm. Yeah, this this part. Uh, uh, co the copper hydroxide is reduced or oxidized. It's reduced. It's reduced, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, now let, 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 let's let's look at this uh, mm, uh, together as a, a review, or if you already know it. Okay, so in redox reaction, reducing agent is uh, oxidized, right? And the reducing agent is the one whose oxidizing number increases or decreases. Reducing for reducing agent, its oxidizing number is increased or decreased. Uh, reduce should increase, like uh, like you just said. It should increase. I think it increases or it decreases. I think it should increase. On them. I don't know. Yeah. Yes, the reducing the the, the, the reducing agent. Is the one oxidizing whose oxidizing number is uh, increased, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and the uh, oxid for this is for reducing re, uh, reducing agent. How about the oxidant oxidizing agent? It's reduced, and oxidizing agent is the one whose oxid oxidizing number decreases, right? Yes. Yeah. For this, yeah, for this reaction here. Uh, now the cup copper ion it gets a uh, electron to 
copperous. The oxidizing number for copper iron, copper, uh, iron is uh, two plus, and the, the oxidizing number for the copperous is uh, one plus, right? So in this case, the oxidizing number decreases. So it is reduced, okay? So from copper iron to copperous, it's uh, reduced, okay? And the copper iron in the reaction is an oxidizing agent here, okay? So oxidizing agent, it gets an electron, okay? It gets an electron and is reduced. The oxidizing number then is uh, decreased, okay? Right? Because electron is uh, with one negative charge, right? That makes their oxidizing number decreases, okay? So this is for oxidizing agent. To the uh, in contrast, in contrast for the reducing agent, it loses an electron and uh, it is oxidized. The oxidi oxidizing number increases because it loses an electron, okay? It loses one negative charge, okay? So the oxidizing number increases, right? So this is for inorganic. So this for inorganic chemistry, it, it, it is easy. We only look at their oxidizing number to, to tell if it's uh, oxidizing number increases or decreases to tell whether it's a reducing agent or oxidizing agent, okay? But for organic chemistry, it is usually hard to tell the change in their oxidizing number, right? So in organic chemistry, the general rule is uh, if you adding oxygen or eliminating hydrogen, that means oxidize, oxidize, oxidizing, okay, oxidization, while Adding oxygen, no, no, no. Adding hydrogen or eliminating oxygen means reduction, okay? So here from aldehyde to carboxylic acid, uh, one oxygen is added, right? So it is uh, oxidized. So aldehyde is oxidized to carbolic acid, right? So in this reaction, filling solution, it oxidizes uh, glucose to get a uh, gluconic acid. Because now this is in a basic solution, okay? It's in alkaline solution. So the final, so it finally forms a carboxylic salt. Mm, at first, the basic copper hydroxide is in a blue-greenish color. So this is the blue-greenish color filling solution, okay? And the copperous oxide, we find a product here is a brick red precipitate. So the, uh, this reaction with the color change can be used for what? to identify the reducing saccharide, okay? Because there is a color change. Now, if we uh, add a filling solution to a sample and we get this uh, uh, break red precipitate, we can tell there must be a reducing saccharide in this, in it, right? So this reaction is used for identification of reducing uh, saccharide. Okay. Also, in our later, uh, after we introduce uh, uh, some example of uh, monosaccharide, uh, disaccharide, and the polysaccharide, we will introduce the um, quantitative quantitative uh, identification of uh, saccharide. This is a, 
this reaction is also used for quantitative uh, measurement of the content of saccharide because the um, copperous oxide is a brick red uh, precipitate which can be weighed, okay? So it is also used for quantitative identification for both for qualitative identification and the quantitative identification of uh, reducing saccharide, okay? All right, so this the this, this is the first one. Uh, glucose uh, react with the filling solution. It also react with tolerance reagent. So what is tolerance uh, re reagent? So tolerance reagent is a basic silver ammonia complex. How do we get uh, silver ammonia? We first add ammonia to silver nitrate solution, okay? So originally it is a silver nitrate solution, okay? And we add ammonia uh, drop by drop. At first, you will get a black precipitate, okay? What is the black precipitate in this case? Anyone? If you add ammonium to silver nitrate, what what do you get? Ammonium is an alkali solution, right? What is the black precipitate? It's the silver hydroxide, okay? The hydro silver hydroxide is in a black color. It's a, it's a black precipitate, okay? Then as you continue adding the ammonia, it looks like my, my internet can can you hear me? Because uh, my internet Wait. seems yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, sure. yeah, my internet seems uh has has trouble time to time. Okay, so afterwards, as you continue adding the ammonia, the black precipitate dissolved, and you get silver ammonia complex. Okay, so it is a complex between the silver ion and the uh, ammonia. So the silver ion and the nitrogen atom in ammonia is linked via coordination bond, okay? So we call it a complex. Uh, so this is a tolerance reagent. Uh, it also oxidizes aldehyde to carboxylic. So this means it it also oxidizes glucose to gluconic acid and tolerance is reduced to silver and gives you a shiny finish if you do this uh, reaction in a round bottom flask, okay? If it's in a, uh, the reaction is uh, in, performed in a round bottom flask, you finally get a shiny finish. Uh, this is also called a silver mirror reaction, okay? So it can be also used uh, to identify identification test for uh, reducing saccharide, okay? If the silver mirror appears, then there must be reducing a, a saccharide in, in it, okay? But remember, it's only for reducing saccharide, okay? If it's ketose, ketose with ketone group, then it doesn't react with tolerance or filling region, okay? Now let's take a five minutes break and uh, we'll continue in five minutes. <laughs> 